Hello grade 11s and grade 12s. In this video, we're going to be looking at another Newton's law question. However, in this question, we have an applied force acting at an angle relative to the horizontal. Let's jump right into the question and remember to stick around for all the teacher tips that I share throughout the video that'll help you get top marks in your exam. So our question says that we have a box, they give me the mass of the box, and it's being pulled across the floor by a constant applied force of 20 Newton. This is our applied force. The force acts at an angle of 40 degrees to the horizontal. The magnitude of the frictional force is 4 Newton. And then they say calculate the acceleration of the box. Now, first things first, I want you to always think about is this a Newton's first law question or is this a Newton's second law question? From what we can see in the question, they are asking us to calculate acceleration. That means that it's a Newton's second law question. And we will start off our answer with F net is equal to MA. It's not a first law question. Remember, if it was a first law question, they would have said the box moves at a constant velocity or uniform velocity or constant speed, or they would have said the box does not move. So this is a Newton's second law question. The second thing that I want you to do is, although they do not ask for it, let's draw a free body diagram. So because they don't ask for a free body diagram for marks, I can include components on this diagram if I want to, and I recommend doing that. So that's my first teacher tip, because obviously including components can help you work out the question. And you will know that if you watch my videos on Newton's equations. That's a very important video. It's linked down below. So we've got our weight or FG, force of gravity, pointing straight down. We've got our normal force pointing straight up, because remember, the normal force is exerted 90 degrees to the surface. So it'll point straight up. Then we've got our applied force acting at, at an angle up and to the right. So that would be F applied. And they tell me that it's a 20 Newton force. Remember this one is Fn over here, Fn or N. And then the box is moving along the floor in this direction. So friction will act in the opposite direction. You should know that about friction. And the thing about friction is it is always parallel to the surface. So even though your applied force is acting at an angle, friction isn't going to act at a weird angle. It won't. Friction is always parallel to the surface. So it'll go to the left like that. That is F K. Now, if the question asks you to draw and label a free body diagram for marks, this is where you would stop and you would get one mark for every force. So this would be a four mark diagram. However, the question didn't ask me for a free body diagram. I'm doing it for rough to help me with my calculations. Now, as soon as you see a force acting at an angle, so in this case, the applied force is acting at an angle, I know that I can break that force up into components. Remember that if a box is on an incline, then it's the weight that we break up into components like we did in this question, FG perpendicular, FG parallel. This video will be linked in the description box below as well. So in this question, if applied, it's acting at an angle, so we've got this component, which is F applied parallel because it's parallel to the surface. And this one that's going up, which is F applied perpendicular because it's perpendicular to the surface. Now, sometimes my students ask me, ma'am, how do I know which way the component arrows should point? Well, if applied force, if applied is going up and to the right, then my components must go up. And to the right so up and to the right because together up and to the right gives me this one that goes up and to the right okay cool so now we've got our free body diagram and the question wants acceleration now you need to know and it, it needs to make sense to you that the box is going to accelerate in this direction the parallel direction the box does not move in the up down or vertical direction so in order to calculate acceleration I need to consider the parallel forces, or you can call it the horizontal forces, or you can call it the X forces because it's going along the X axis. So technically I'm looking for F net in the X direction or F net in the parallel direction. And which forces does that include if you look at my free body diagram? So basically which forces are going left, right? That would be friction and F applied parallel. So the sum of those forces, if I take those two forces and add it together, that must equal mass times acceleration. So you'll go 
if applied parallel plus friction equals mass times acceleration. And a lot of students say, but ma'am, why are you plusing them? Because they're going in opposite directions. We always start off with plus signs. It's called vector addition. And then when we substitute values in, that's when we will put our negative signs in. So just keep in mind what we're looking for the entire time. We're looking for acceleration. So I'm going to carry on with the sum under here, or I'm going to run out of space. So we've got F net in the X direction is equal to MA. We start off like that. Then you add up the forces in the parallel direction because the box will accelerate in the parallel direction. Then I'm going to choose a positive direction. So I'm going to choose to the right as positive. That means that friction is going to the left. And that means that friction must be negative. And they give me friction. Look, friction is 4 Newton. So when I substitute that in, it'll be negative 4. I know I haven't substituted F applied parallel in. I'm going to do that now. How would I work out F applied parallel? Well, F applied is 20 Newton. And if you take a look at my little triangle that I did on my free body diagram, this is why I do this. You can see that there's a 90 degree angle. This is a 40 degree angle. This is a very small triangle. Let's just do it on this one. It's the bigger version of what you see there. So this is F applied, this big arrow over here, and that is 20 Newton. And this angle here is 40 degrees. This is F applied parallel, and this is F applied perpendicular. How would I work out F applied parallel? Look at the angle that they give me, 40 degrees. And F applied parallel is adjacent. It's next to that angle. So I will use cos. So F applied parallel is equal to 20, because that's the hypotenuse, 20 Newton. They gave it to me. Cos 40. And that F applied parallel is what I'm going to substitute in over here. So if applied parallel is going to the right, take a look at which way that arrow is going. It's pointing to the right. So 20 cos 40, I'm going to substitute it in as a positive 20 cos 40. So I've got 20 cos 40 minus 4 equals mass. This is the mass of the box. What is the mass of the box? The mass of the box is 10 kilograms and acceleration is what I'm looking for. And then all you need to do from this point onwards is solve. So on my left hand side of the equation, I've got 11,320888, don't round it off, equals 10a. I'm not at the end of the question, so teacher tip, never round off in the middle of the question. That's also why, by the way, grade 12s and grade 11s, I left this as 20 cos 40 instead of working it out to decimal places. I just substituted it in as 20 cos 40 because I didn't want to round the decimals off, so I just left it like that. Okay, then... How do I get acceleration by itself? I say 11,320888886. So I left it on my calculator. Divided by 10. And I get acceleration as 1,13. I'm rounding it off to two decimal places. Meters per second squared. Or meters per second per second. To the right. Now how do I know that it's to the right? I got a positive value for acceleration. And my positive direction is to the right. Another teacher tip, the rule is at the end of a question in physical sciences, in chemistry and physics. You may round off to at least two decimal places, but round off only at the end. So I could have left this 1,13 to more decimal places. Always remember your units and direction because they ask for acceleration, not magnitude of acceleration. I hope that question made sense to you. And I can't wait to see you guys in another video very soon. Comment down below what other types of Newton's questions I should do. Bye, everybody.